What's up guys? Just want to talk to you about my haul this weekend. Uh, I got a lot of good stuff. I spent about $135 on everything here, as you can see. Um, I'm expecting a decent ROI actually, and uh, let me get right into it. I'll explain what I bought, why I bought it, and what I paid and what I expect to make on it. So, um, yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, so I went to three different estate sales this weekend. I tried to break it into three different piles. I know it doesn't make any sense to you, but uh, we'll start at the top and work our way down. So um, from one estate sale, I got uh, a bunch of clothing items and a camera. Um, so starting out at that estate sale, I paid $25. It's everything you see right here. This stack of clothes, uh, the camera and the two snapbacks. Um, starting out, I got a new tags vintage John Deere snapback. Uh, it's not super old, but it's old enough to, I guess, call it vintage. Um, pretty cool hat. Uh, I paid about, I guess, uh, two dollars for that. Um, I should be able to sell it for twenty to twenty-five bucks, depending on, you know, the market at the time, how many are out there. Uh, so good ROI there. Next up, we have this. This is a fish hat. Um, I don't sell much band stuff, but I'm going to start looking into like band t-shirts and vintage uh, stuff like that, vintage band stuff. But this is a fish hat vintage, as you can see, uh, share in the groove, and it is vintage based on this tag and age. Um, similar comps for this hat, we're actually going for, if it will focus, 40 to 60 bucks on eBay. So, paid about two dollars for that. Great ROI there. Um, next up, got this uh, J. Crew Stadium cloth by Anello Gori. Um, this is just a nice jacket. I washed everything here, and actually a small rip formed in the wash because I overpacked it. Uh, that was my fault. But a really nice liner. Uh, this is actually one of their like higher end lines, I guess, one of their older higher end lines, but. Great vintage piece, really cool, well-made jacket. J. Crew seems to sell well for me, especially the old, older stuff if it's in good condition. So look out for that. Um, and then I got a stack of about 10 band and other t-shirts here. I paid approximately $1 each for these. Again, $25 for everything you see right here. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I kind of went based on the tags if it had you know, older made in the, let me see if this will focus, older made in USA tags. Let's see. Man, the autofocus on the G7X is really not that great at times. Yeah, so I look for old tags. If it says made in USA, it's a good indicator that it's actually vintage because, you know, how much stuff are we making nowadays? So, starting out, I got this cool Fu Manchu vintage t-shirt. I don't know if that's a band or not, but I looked up comps on other shirts and they were less cool than this and selling for decent money. So not always a great indicator, but I'm gonna take a shot for a dollar. Um, then we have two Patagonia shirts. These aren't super high-end shirts or anything, but they are Patagonia. They kind of have a nice collar. Um, I think these were made in the early 2000s. So uh, should be able to get about $20 for this one. And this is the same shirt, just a different color. Again, about $20. Next up, we have a vintage long sleeve fish shirt. Uh, this is a Hanes Beefy Tee. This is not made in the USA, but... Oh, it is made in the USA. So, never mind. Um, these shirts sell really well. Anything fish, I'm not even a, a fan of them. I barely listen to their music, but I'm aware of them. Seems to sell really well. I think comps are going close to 40 and, and I think even up to like $80 on these shirts, similar ones. And it's Fish, and then here's the back. I believe that's an al one of their album covers, but I'm not sure. So a dollar into at least 30, upwards of 60. Here's another band I never heard of, Ween. Um, the only reason I looked up all these bands is because I recognized Fish. I looked up one comp, saw it was a good, uh, a good thing to sell and then I started looking up the other stuff if they had vintage older tags which I look for made in USA vintage feel to them you can kind of tell right away but here you can see Gildan activewear 
I don't, I don't think this one was actually made in the United This one made in Honduras, but Ween is a Canadian band. I have never heard of them, even by just their name. Um, here's their little, their little logo guy. But yeah, the uh, comps were going really, really good on, on anything Ween. So if you find anything Ween, buy it. Um, so it's a nice one. I think I'll, I'll get about $30 for that. Here's another one, another vintage one. These are all size extra large or 2XL, which is a great size to have. Um, this one had a few stains on it. I did wash it again, but um, really cool shirt. Uh, if someone's a Ween fan, this is really cool. So then we just got the big name. These are vintage John Deere. These are old Fruit of the Loom labels. Not made in the USA, but old labels. So John Deere short sleeve, get about 20 for that. John Deere. Or is that the long sleeve? That's short sleeve. I thought I had a long one. Anyway, so I have two John Deere vintage Fruit of the Loom shirts, about $20 each. And I got a Grateful Dead live at the Cow Palace, New Year's Eve 1976. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually from that time, but the tag was old on here. Liquid blue, made in Honduras, so I wasn't sure. A lot of there's a lot of stuff on eBay, particular of this New Year's Eve event or whatever. So, again, should be able to get 20 bucks for that. And then we have a live fish. This one's old because you can see the tag. Live fish, bayside, heavyweight, two extra large, made in USA. I believe that's fish, but just because it made sense. If not, I paid a dollar for an old vintage shirt. Um, I'm gonna go for at least 20, but if it sells anything like the other fish stuff, should do pretty well. And then here's a two day festival with fish in the Coventry, August 14th and 15th, 2004. Specific date shirts sell, seem to sell well, especially the vintage ones, so look out for that. And the last item I got at that sale for $25 was this camera, and it is an old 35 millimeter film camera. I love to, to buy cameras, I get them cheap, because people think they're junk. This one's a little gunked up, but um, comps are going for these in working order around $90 for parts or repair around, I think, mid 30s. So uh, this is a Univex Mercury with the, I think, flash on there and just a really cool camera. You can feel how heavy it is. That's how you know it's good quality. So um, always look out for old metal bodied 35 millimeter cameras. Even the plastic body ones are good if they're a good brand and quality. So yeah, that's one sale. That was one sale. I, again, I paid $35 for everything there and my estimated ROI of everything sold or my estimated gross sale price would be right around 300 bucks. So 25 into 300, 10 times ROI minus fees. You're talking about uh, low $200 net profit, so great, great buys. Um, I'm testing the closed market, I'm learning about it, but uh, I think to really learn about it, you gotta get skin in the game, you gotta pay for stuff, you gotta list it and try and sell it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that for 25 bucks. If I saw the camera alone, I made a bath. If I saw the fish hat at what it was going for, I, you know, I doubled my money, so pretty low risk. Um, we'll get into the, the stuff I got from the next sale, so right here. Uh, I only got three items at the next sale. I also paid, I paid $24. I was supposed to pay 25 and I pulled out a lot of singles and I'm like, do you mind if I pay you in singles? She said, fine. Um, I counted them all out. I only had 24. She, she kind of gave me a funny look and I said, hey, will you take 24? And she's like, yeah, okay. Uh, if you do garage selling or estate sales, singles are a valuable commodity. So she got $1 less, but she made up for it an easy change. Um, so I bought two leather coach bags and a sealed, a new sealed Stratego 50th anniversary edition. Um, opened ones of these were going for $30 on eBay. Sealed are going for, I think, close to 90 bucks. So that's a really good flip. Um, I didn't even look on Amazon. A lot of times I'll scan them on Amazon just because it's an, a really quick way to look up a, you know, a general comp. Amazon's higher price than eBay, obviously, but um, a 50th anniversary of Stratego is, you know, a great buy. Always look for sealed board games, especially big name ones that, are, you know, vintage sealed board games, if they're not printing this anymore, have a lot of value. So buy them if you see them. Um, 
This is just something I like. I have a cool leather laptop bag. It's not Coach. It's uh, Peely, I think the name is. It's a, it's a, another good leather brand. But uh, the, both these are vintage Coach bags. One's pretty crusty. Uh, this is a laptop bag. This is like a carry bag. I guess you could put a laptop in it. But this one was pretty crusty. Um, I paid $25 for everything you see here. So we'll say you know, 10, 10, 5, or however you want to break it up, doesn't really matter. On average, I paid about $8 a piece. So, um, you know, people want leather, they want it to have character, I think, or they want it to be pristine. So, if you find like a really clean bag with like a, a little scuff, it sticks out a lot more than if the whole bag has good character to it. Um, this is definitely a vintage coach bag. Uh, it's real. I mean, not a lot of people fake coach, but I guess they are out there. Um, the inside's definitely crusty, but as you can see, like it's a heavy duty brass zipper. They don't make them like this really anymore. Um, and then I looked up the, there's a logo inside the bag. Let me see if I can find it. And typically these logos will have numbers or a let, uh, you know, a letter series, something to identify the specific make, but you know, there you go. I looked that up, I couldn't find anything, but similar coach bags, or cons leather coach bags, were consistently going for 30, 40 bucks, some up to 100. So for $8, I'll take a risk. Um, same thing with this laptop bag. I, I found comps of similar or identical bags all the way from 25 up to, I think, $90 again. I'm gonna shoot for 50 and probably 40 to 50 on this one. So this one's a nice laptop bag. It's got a big leather strap You know, it's got the rugged leather shoulder piece for a little bit of padding coach Excuse the focus and yeah, just a great laptop bag Same thing has the old-school uh, coach logo in there with a number and this one's clean on the inside unlike the other one This one's a little dirty like I said, but still a cool bag um, and then Stratego, I should be able to get uh, $50 minimum for that. So 25 into 150, about 100 net there. I'm trying to play conservative numbers instead of, you know, overhyping stuff. Um, so that was estate sale number two. And the last one, which is actually the first estate sale I went to, is this. Um, I paid $20 for the lot of five... Uh, ink and toner cartridges. Ink and toner is always a good thing to go for. If you see these big ones and they're authentic, they go for decent money. Um, so I paid on average $4 each for these. I think on average they're going for about uh, $30 to $50 a peach piece, depending on each one. Um, so yeah, look out for that. Not excited, not an exciting find, not cool like vintage leather stuff, but you know, I'm there to make money. I'm not there to find cool stuff, although I do find cool stuff and buy for myself a lot of the time. Um, that's not the idea. I want to just find stuff that's easy to sell, will sell quickly, has a big market, and I can make the money back on. Um, next up was this really good find. I paid $50 for uh, these two Black Armor WS110 one terabyte external hard drives. These are pretty high-end external hard drives. Um, they're Windows 7 compatible. I don't know if they're Windows 10, but Amazon, you're se they're selling these new for about 140 On eBay, new, they're going for, uh, I think close to 100 bucks, 90 to 100 bucks. So, great find. I'm actually going to use one of those as a backup and sell the other. So, I paid 50 bucks for these two and this Apple IIc owner's manual. Um, any kind of old computer manual, car manuals. Stuff like that tends to sell well. I believe the comps are uh, 20 to $35 on this, depending on condition. And it has, some have sticker inserts. I, d I didn't really go through these. I don't think I have it, but still 25 to 30 bucks. So 50 on this part, should be able to sell it for, you know, 100, 200, 230. 230 gross, my net will be right around low 100s. And again, on this, I paid 20 for everything. Gross should be around 150 to 200. Net will be, you know, around 100 bucks. So, um, and then the last thing I got at that sale, this is all from one sale. Keep in mind, so 20, 50, that's 70 total. And then I paid 15 dollars for this. 
This is a JVC mini DV uh, camcorder, an old school tape camcorder. This is a, J a JVC, get the focus going. JVC GR DVL 820U. Um, this is a great camera if you just want to sell it for one. And if people want to convert their uh, digital or their tapes to digital, I think you can do that on this. That's what makes this one actually more valuable. They got the camera, the manual, a charger, an extra battery, a remote, um, the bag. These two electronic things, this strap, and this, all these tapes for 15 bucks, so a really good deal. Um, the camera itself is going for about 80 to 100, depending on condition. With the extra stuff, I should get close to 100. Um, I got this Sony Walkman. This is the WMFS11. Uh, this is like a waterproof version of a tape player. Sony Walkman, and it also has a radio on it. Comps are going for about 35 bucks on these, 30, 35. Um, I got this Casio like mini radio TV. I wanted to just try it out, but uh, I didn't look at it when I was there. I opened it up and all the batteries were had been pretty decayed. You know, they, they had exploded in there and there was battery acid. I cleaned it all out, I put new batteries in, it still wouldn't turn on, so. Might just saw for parts as is. Working, these are going for 20 to 30 bucks as parts. You know, maybe 10, but I just was curious to see what would even come on on a, a TV nowadays with, you know, the way everything's digital instead of analog and all that. Um, so yeah, $15 for the camera, these two, the tapes, and a really cool Mickey Mouse camera strap. So I'll probably throw this on, you know, one of the, the 35 millimeters I pick up at another time to increase the value. Um, so 15 into 100, 130, 140. 150 and 170. So 115 into 170 gross, probably close to 100 net. Uh, not bad. So, like I said, I uh, did pretty good this weekend. I got a lot of, you know, varying things. I don't go all hard goods, I don't go all clothes. So, yeah, like I was saying, um, I'm trying not to stick to just hard goods, ugh, excuse me, hard goods or clothing. I'm trying to hit everything in between. Hard goods have the best ROI, and they're easy to sell, but clothing's widely available, so you want to try to find a balance between the two if you can, unless you have really good sources for hard goods. Um, so I spent about $135 to $140 this weekend, plus gas and time, and you know I did, I did decently. Um, there weren't really even that many sales, I just said. Screw it, I'm going to go a little further today, hit the sales that I can, and, you know, I did okay. So, 135, I'm looking at probably, if everything sells here, five to 600 net. Uh, price, 700 gross, 500 net, and I spent 135. So, pretty good returns, and yeah, uh, I love it. I enjoy thrifting, I enjoy going to estate sales, and I like flipping stuff. I like learning about different things. Um, if you go to estate sales, you end up getting a history lesson on, you know, whatever you're looking at that's old. People will chime in about what they like, you know. Um, and there's a lot of cool different people that you meet at these sales. You know, you'll run into t so many different people uh, of so many different, you know, they all have different personalities and interests. And some are hoarders, some are resellers, some are just people going to window shop. And, you know, you get the full range of people. It's really fun. So, um, yeah, if you guys... Uh, if you guys go thrifting or stating, let me know what you look for. Uh, if you guys go for similar stuff, let me know. And, um, if I, you know, if I underpriced or overpriced anything, let me know that too. Uh, I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to improve my knowledge base on stuff to resell and sourcing and stuff like that. So, uh, if you like the video, please like, and subscribe. I want to pump out more of these. Um, I think it's really fun. It's a good way to document my journey on resale and yeah. Um, so I guess, uh, if you already liked it, um, I don't know. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.